Hello, this is Luis. Welcome to the HDTV updates from the IDF World Diabetes Congress 2022. Today we bring you the Day 3 updates of IDF 2022. Bailey presented a session titled Efficacy and Safety of Terzipatide in Type 2 Diabetes, the Surpass Clinical Trial Program, in which he reported that terzipatide demonstrated robust efficacy on HbA1c and body weight reductions in patients with varying background therapies, varying mean diabetes duration, and CV risk. It was also demonstrated that 81 to 97% of patients had HbA1c levels less than 7% and weight losses greater than 15% from baseline. Terzipatide was well tolerated with no adverse effects and improved metabolic parameters. In a session titled Updates on the Assessment and Treatment of Diabetic Sensory Neuropathy, Perkins stressed the importance of developing an efficient, practical approach to diabetic neuropathy assessment and management. There is also a need to consider alternative neuropathy causes. Finally, the new evidence on the management of painful diabetic neuropathy including drug and device combinations, as well as cognitive behavioral therapy, must be explained. Bailey emphasized in a session on dual SGLT1 and SGLT2 inhibitors that both dual SGLT1 and SGLT2 inhibitors delay absorption and increase glucosuria. Furthermore, he stated that sonagliflozin, a dual SGLT1 and SGLT2 inhibitor, has demonstrated favorable metabolic effects such as increased intestinal absorption and increased GLP-1. He also reported that when combined with optimized insulin therapy, sotagliflozin significantly increased glucose TIR without increasing time spent below 70 mg per deciliter and decreased PPG, thereby improving glycemic control in type 1 diabetes as well. When discussing the future of oral insulin, Shashank Yoshi stated that oral insulin can overcome the practical challenges associated with injectable insulin therapy. Multiple oral formulations have been tested in clinical trials with limited favorable results. Currently, ORMD0801 and Trigopil are undergoing further development. The effectiveness, safety, and cost-effectiveness of these promising oral insulin formulations in real-world practice remain to be seen. Home, in an interesting session on biosimilar biobetters in diabetes, the evolving global landscape underlined that a variety of different types of insulin-based medicines are available globally. Advances in formulation and structural changes, amino acids and adducts, have provided us with useful new properties and will continue to do so. He further stressed that biosimilar regulation has ensured quality, but limited cost savings. Patient psychological dependence on their familiar insulin limits interchangeability, but with support can allow substitution. Lazarus, in another session on new models of care to address fatty liver disease in diabetes, envisioned the key actions which are important to prioritize NAFLD public health. An organized agenda outlining what research and action is required. He said that we need to move the issue outside of the liver health space and make it part of others' agendas, example, NCDs like obesity and diabetes. He concluded by emphasizing the importance of establishing multi-stakeholder collaborations across sectors and disciplines, as well as engaging with WHO on a global and regional scale. This concludes our coverage of the HDTV updates for Day 3 of the IDF 2022. We'll meet again next year at IDF 2023. Till then, stay safe.